Yeah, good morning everybody. Um, there's some articles I've been wanting to, to talk to you about, uh, about some activities that are going on uh, on on our planet right now uh, in regards to the pole shift and all. Well, uh, this article that I found uh, is uh, out of Yosemite National Park. Now, I've, uh, there's been some people like um, the Countdown 2010 um, who's now the countdown back up because they YouTube you know out, um, got rid of his channel uh, for some really silly reasons of course that's YouTube but go check out his channel um, and uh, there's some others like Smoking Joe Trainer and MK Electric and uh, they they provide like good news uh, they got some insider stuff really good stuff uh, but anyway um, this one is uh, about Yosemite and the falls the firefall that is uh, happening right now in uh, in Yosemite and this was at uh, the falls that called the horsetail fall uh, there in Yosemite um, it says every mid-February, uh, the setting sun backlights the, the falls, giving that effect, like fire going on. And it's kind of, it's a, like a natural phenomenon that occurs during that time. And um, it says that lava hasn't flowed in Yosemite for millions of years. Uh, before the last few weeks, vis visitors there can see this natural phenomenon that echoes the area's fiery past and instead of molten rock however that the locals call a natural waterfall owes its existence to uh, a fort uh, to fortuitous con convergence of water sunlight and season and you can see like the the snow up there too so it gives that really awesome effect Say. And there is a little waterfall on the east of the El Capitan called the Horsetail Fall that catches the light for just a few fleeting moments. And then you capture this uh, illusion of a waterfall of fire um, that's not like lava. And, uh, well, speaking of. Uh, you know, there's been talk about a, a possible uh, since the it w had to do with the volcanoes. Since there's like a lot of the volcanoes erupting around the planet right now, uh, Yosemite has the largest super volcano uh, located in the central part of the United States, and uh, they were talking about if there was a good chance that. Uh, pressure that would build up with all the um, the activity going on with all the strange sounds all the strange noises remember uh, that um, that in like there was like a lot of like thunderstorms going on underneath the earth I mean that it could be like a possible eruption that may happen with a super volcano in Yosemite as I was wanting to say but uh, that's all I needed to say there so I'll just leave a link to that okay and um, certain parts of the uh, the well the it was the northern hemisphere a part of the earth is being affected by heavy snows and uh, Romania in Europe uh, is digging out of 15 feet of snow so most of Europe is getting all this tremendous snow right now and you see that this woman's trying to shovel out an entrance to her home there and her village there in Bucharest and it says that the electricity uh, well that halted electricity exports and limited supplies to industrial consumers in a bid to uh, meet rising household demands due to the freezing temperatures there. And I'll leave a link to this also. And see, look at the ice. 
it doesn't look cold. Cause I think it's more what you call a more than a cold snap. But it's like it's called a deep freeze. The barbed wire being covered by ice. Uh, I would say brr, cold. And they have to have backhoes to plow through the snow. Yeah, look at that. And look at that cold. Oh, okay. We're right, moving on here. Okay, now this, I'm into like survival things, you know, like what to do in case of like survival, in case of wilderness survival. Well, this one caught my interest because it was kind of different and in a way kind of make you sick at the same time. <laughs> But the title of this is Marines Drink Cobra Blood in Jungle Survival Exercise. And oh, that's disgusting. Uh, it says a U.S. Marine drinks cobra blood offered by a Thai, a Thai Navy instructor during a jungle survival program at a Navy base in Thailand. Now this makes me suspicious for one thing. Cobra blood. I mean, if you can't like dig for water, I mean, it's it get and as much. I don't know how much rainfall is there in Thailand, uh, but I'm I'm thinking I'd rather find water if I could and then drink blood. And is this getting people to get accustomed to drinking blood? You know, I mean that's it doesn't don't sound natural to me. And it shows pictures here of doing the same thing. They show them how to kill a cobra and then drink its blood. Oh, yuck. I mean, what is this, anyway? It's too weird. It's too weird. It's getting too weird, people. And the Marines tuck in, um, into insects during a training session. They're going to eat insects. <gasps> That's a good way to you get your protein. And here's a yeah, here's a video. I wonder Uh Yeah. I don't like snakes. Ugh, this is gross. Oh. I, I, I just won't show the rest of it here. <laughs> uh, now, too, since I've gotten into survival stuff and survivor gear, uh, if you're still trying to find some things or trying to stock up on some items that you need, like, in case, like, the electric would go out and you needed to um, try to figure out what type of lighting that you would need, you know, like other than kerosene lanterns, uh, lamps, oil lamps, uh, or something that does use batteries, and but you don't have an electrical source. Well, I thought that this would be a good idea uh, for, for that. Uh, it is a solar powered battery charger, and uh, so I'll just leave the link there. And uh, but what it does is that uh, it's a 11 in one battery charger, and it uh, it recharges your batteries for you uh, with with uh, by the power of the sun. And it says according to this, it says it can charge batteries from solar power for your flashlights, your AM, FM, shortwave radio, emergency weather. Uh, alert uh, radio and walkie-talkies and such and those things uh, those items are very valuable as well too and um, something else on survival foods uh, you know when if you're stocking up like on foods uh, I'm not foods but uh, like seeds and things like that uh, a good idea is to stock up on a, like a lot of grains and spices and herbs because these are very important for your health 
and uh, they particularly uh, talk about here in this article uh, about rice uh, spelt um, is a kind of grain uh, oats quinoa uh, millet um, or millet excuse me and uh, barley just to name, name a few and there was something else that wasn't mentioned here uh, buckwheat buckwheat is an excellent um, grain it's full of antioxidants um, d and on all kinds of grains really some, uh, anything that you like um, um, let me see what, was, what else is here and I think that was it I'll just leave the link to that and you all can read that um, okay now I'm getting started on the uh, talking about a little bit about the pole shift and about a uh, rapid pole shift that's happening uh, right about now. Uh, like I said, with all the activities going on with all the, the volcanoes and the earthquakes and all. Uh, and a lot of the, um, actually a lot of the, the changes that are, are, that are taking place on our planet. And the Bible speaks of that too. Um, about, uh, about, uh, well, not basically about calling a pole shift, but where it says there that the um, Earth would um, reel around uh, like a drunkard. Uh, I believe that was in the book of Isaiah, if I'm uh, correct. Um, but this article here, I think I found a few, quite a few articles from this one place alone that talks about the pole shift and. Um, if you haven't come up on this, it's very interesting information uh, that they provide here. And uh, so this was basically what it, what this means is that, uh, or what they're saying here about the about being a rapid pole shift, is that within 400 years, in a between a 50 year lifespan, uh, the Earth is, has been moving. Uh, that that much which is which you know according well as with the uh, geophysical um, movements in the magnetic uh, the North Pole and South Pole coordinates uh, not the coordinates but um, uh, with the uh, well with the movement going on it's very it is rapid what they call it what they, they've named it. That's why they call it rapid pulse shift. Um, but the north uh, pole uh, position that I, um, that was configured for the the past 420 years um, came up with the uh, fact with with the foundings that they, they that they had that was that came from uh, a gra the, the graph which I'm going about to show you is that it is an alarming discovery that the amount of the magnetic pole shift just happened over the, t uh, the, the 10 to 15, 20 years uh, in, in our century alone and that's that's pretty f fast and uh, since it, since 1860 the uh, magnetic pole shift has more than doubled every 50 years and that's pretty significant uh, geological wise um, and in their term in the geological terms that's very rapid and so during the past 150 years the pole shift has been in the same direction and so during the la in the past 10 years the magnetic North Pole has shifted nearly half of the total distance of the past 50 years. So, so what does that mean? That means that the pole shift is apparently sped up. And that's, yeah, and it's, it's getting faster. And it's, it's even gotten faster since uh, 2010, as you see here on the map, from 1860. And it's it's really made a stretch. Say it's really stretched out. I'm at the end. See in part two. Take care, guys. Bye.